Hi, it's Pamela. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to add photos to your whiteboard videos. Hey, and welcome to the official Doodly YouTube channel. If you enjoy our content, please click the like and subscribe button below. Now let's get straight to the video. One of Doodly's most powerful features is the ability to add your own assets to it. And this includes line drawings, illustrations, and photos. Photos bring some unique challenges, so I thought we should talk about them today. Using photos in your whiteboard videos can change the look and feel of it. A lot of people use the photos full screen. They create interesting videos that don't have any of the traditional doodly elements, like the characters or the drawing hand. Others use the photos as elements within the whiteboard screen, mixing and matching alongside various characters and props. I often use photos and illustrations as part of a greeting card type video or as background elements. When I do, I oftentimes turn the opacity way down and add inspirational quotes on top. That's the beauty of Doodly. You can let your creativity shine. Doodly requires photos to be either in the JPEG or PNG file format with a max resolution of 1920 by 1080. So keep this in mind when downloading photos from sites like Pixabay. You may need to resize your existing photos as well. Adding photos to Doodly is a simple process. Go to Props, click the blue plus sign, navigate to your file, click Open, give it a name if you'd like, click Continue. I mentioned that photos present some challenges in Doodly. For starters, by default, they scribble on. If you like that effect, fine. If not, you have two choices. One, you could try and create your own drawing paths, or two, you could use the fade-in effect. Personally, I prefer the fade-in effect. It's hard to draw a photo. Now, I do have an advanced technique where you first draw an outline of the photo and then bring in the rest of it later, but it does involve converting the photo into an outline and then using multiple layers, and it's very time consuming. When Doodly added the fade in effect, I was so happy because it's just a mouse click or two and it looks really nice. Here's how to do it. Click the pencil icon. Now go over here to reveal mode. Click the down arrow and choose fade. Next, think about how you want the photo to appear in your scene. Do you want it full screen? Is it a background element? Will you be placing characters or objects on top of the photo? I oftentimes turn the opacity down. Of course, it depends on the scene, but doing so makes the photo become less important and it adds a nice ambiance. It's up to you, but here's how to do it. Click the gear icon. Now down here, under opacity, just change the value. Let's choose 50%. Now, let's add some characters on top. When you preview it, notice how the hand erases an area first. This may or may not be what you have in mind. It looks a little bit strange with a photo, so I usually turn it off. Here's how. Go down here to Video Settings, and under Erase Mode, change it to Off. Click Apply. What if you don't want the photo to be full screen? One thing I like to do is add a frame to the photo or place the photo inside of a computer or tablet. And of course, this depends on what you're trying to accomplish with the scene. For example, in general, I find adding a frame to the photo, it kind of helps blend the realism of the photograph into the whiteboard style. This is a helpful technique when doing a tutorial video with screenshots. I hope this tutorial gives you some ideas for working with photos in Doodly. Thanks for watching.